Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to discuss about virtual private cloud and this is part number 5. Learning VPC is long process and we want to understand this properly so we are learning this step by step. And this is part number 5. So, if you are watching this video directly, it is good idea to go back to the previous video as well. Watch whole series and then watch this. It will be very easy for you to understand this. Right? But even if you are watching first time, I will try my level best. So, you will get better understanding of VPC directly from this video as well. Now, in the previous video, we already discussed about basics, right? We understood that how we can create VPC. We also understood how we can create subnets. And we also understood the use case of internet gateway and root table. But is it enough? No. We have to set up VPC according to AWS best practices. And according to the AWS best practices, you have to set up public and private subnet. If you look at this particular picture, here we have these two subnets, but these two subnets are directly connected with internet gateway. So these two subnets are public subnets. It means it is having internet connectivity and anybody over the internet can access this EC2 instances directly, we call it like inbound access. Same way, you can go to this in, you can go inside to this EC2 instance and you can also send requests to the internet, we call it like outbound internet. So here, we have these two subnets, because these two subnets having connectivity with the internet gateway, we call it public subnet. But according to AWS, you must have public subnet and private subnet and the scenario must looks like this. Now, if you look at this picture carefully, here we have two public subnets and two private subnets. Now, in this particular public subnet, we have inbound and outbound internet connectivity and in this subnet, we are actually placing our web servers because web servers are front-end tool. User will try to open your website from these two web servers over the internet. But Hello folks, I'm Vishesh from Cloud Folks Hub. We would like to say thank you to Mr. Chetan Tempala, Wahid Nadab, Samad Dadoria, Satish Chaudhary and Neural Samai. Thank you. Thank you for starting your cloud journey with Cloud Foxer. We promise your learning experience will be incredible. Thank you very much again. The heart is our database server, our user data. We are storing over here in this particular database server. And look at this. These two database servers are in the private subnet. And private subnet don't have internet. You cannot access this EC2 instances like a database instances directly over the internet. In short, we can say that in the private subnet, we don't have internet. It means any servers, database servers in the private subnets are totally safe. So, we have to design four subnets right now. Out of this, two subnets will be public, two subnets will be private. Now, you may have this question that why you are creating four subnets. We can create one private subnet and one public subnet. Right? We can do this, but we have to set up all our application in high availability environment. And according to the AWS best practices, if you want high availability for your application, you have to use two availability zone. Here we have one public subnet in AP South 1A and another in AP South 1B. Here it is a typo, it is a 1B. Okay. I have these two. Why? Because now I can create this EC2 instances into the two different availability zone 
and if any availability zone goes down, I do not need to worry about this because I have another EC2 instance running in the another availability zone. So, for high availability, we are using two AZ over here and we have subnets in both of these two AZ. Now, we want to set up this. Here, I have created VPC. I use subnet calculator to create four subnets. And first of all, we are going to create this. Then we are going to discuss more about it. So right now, I'm going to my AWS console. I'm in my AWS console. Here, I'm going to the VPC. If you look at over here, I don't have any VPC right now. VPC is zero. So I don't have any VPC. So going to the VPC and going to click on create VPC. Okay. So here we have this option, create VPC. And let me click on create VPC. Now, once you click on create VPC, here we have options. So here I'm going to give name. Let's say that my VPC. Here. I'm going to provide IP address range. It is 192.168.0.0 slash 24. Now, once you complete this, then here we have this option to create VPC. So, let me click on create VPC. Now, it is done. I'm going to the subnets, which is our next point. Now, if you look at this picture carefully here, we are creating four subnets. One public, another public. AP South 1A, AP South 1B, and private to private, right? If you look at this IP, we use this subnet mask calculator and created four subnets, okay? So let me do this. So right now, I'm going to click on create subnets. When you click on create subnets, you have to select your VPC, and here we have option. So from one this particular one screen, we can create four subnets. So let me do this. I'm going to give name public subnet 1. I am creating this into the AP South 1A and here I'm going to use 192.168.0.0 slash 26. Okay. Now going to create another subnet so you can click on add subnet. Here I'm going to give name public subnet 1 sorry 2 here, I'm going to select availability zone, AP South 1B. And here, I'm going to use 192.168.0.64 slash 26. Two public subnets into the two different availability zone. Now, add subnet. Private subnet 1. Availability zone. AP South 1A and IP is 192.168.0.128 slash 26. Same way, going to create the fourth subnet known as private subnet 2. Creating this inside the AP South 1B and the IP is the 192. 168.0.192 slash 26. So now it is done. When I will click over here, it will create four subnets. And if you look at over here, all these four subnets are visible. Okay. So I have created four subnets, two public, two private, and I have used two availability zones over here. Now, if I come back to my picture, okay. Can we say that these two are public and these two are private? No, we cannot say this right now because right now it is just the name of our subnets. Right now we can say that all these are private. Why? Because we don't have internet connectivity for our VPC. And we already discussed about internet connectivity in the previous video, right? That if you want internet connectivity, we have to add internet gateway. So now we are going to add internet gateway for our VPC. Let me go to my AWS screen here. 
I am going to the Internet Gateway. Now here, when you click on Create Internet Gateway, it will create Internet Gateway for us. So click Create Internet Gateway. Now, we have to provide name. I am going to say IG, you can name it any. And then click on Create Internet Gateway. Done. Now once you create your Internet Gateway, the status of your Internet Gateway is always detached. It means after creating Internet Gateway, you have to attach with your VPC. So let me click on Action and let me click on Attach to VPC. Here I am selecting my VPC and Attach Internet Gateway. So now Internet Gateway attached to my VPC. Okay, this process is done. Let me go back to the picture and here you will look this like that. Now, can I able to open internet right now if I'm just going to attach internet gateway with my VPC? No, right? The next step is we have to add entry into the root table. So first of all, we need to understand what is this root table is. As I explained you in the previous video that there is a one root table which is used to connect all your four subnets and this root table is known as main root table. Do we need to create this? No, AWS will provide this root table automatically. We cannot delete this root table but by default all of your subnets are actually associated with this root table in the AWS. Now, first of all, let's take a look of this. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. See, I'm going to the root tables. Here I have this root table and this root table is a main root table. See, yes. If yes written over here, it means this root table automatically created by AWS and all our subnets. In our case, all four subnets are automatically associated with this particular root table. Now, how I can find out? See, I'm going to select this. And here I have this option subnet association. Okay. And if you scroll down, you will find out that these four subnets are already associated with this root table. And read this subnets without explicit association. It means it is automatically associated. We are not going to add this manually or anything. It is explicit. Uh, without explicit means implicit, automatically associated with our root table. Okay. And now let's go back to our screen. Okay, see. So we have this root table and four subnets are already associated with main root table. Now suppose if I am going to add root into this particular root table towards the internet gateway, what happened? All of four subnets will be public subnet. And we don't want to do this, right? According to our goal, we want this subnet these two subnets as a public subnet and these two subnets as a private. And if I'm going to add this root over here, all the subnets will be public. So how I can solve this problem? To solve this problem, what we will do, we will create one another root table. Okay, we can create root table and I'm going to create this right now and I will name it RT for public. Okay, so let's do this. I'm going to AWS console. Here, I have this main root table. So I'm going to click on create root table and giving name RT for public. Selecting my VPC and create root table. So right now, root table is done and I have two root tables into the routing table. One in the, in the AWS console main and one is RT for public. Okay. Now let's go back to this. Okay. So we have created this. But right now, no subnets are associated with this particular root table. So this root table is there, but it is useless. And we want to use this table, right? So what we will do, we will associate our public subnets with RT for public. Okay. Right? So, this particular root table don't have any root associ uh, any subnet associated right now. So, we are going to associate these two public 
some nets with this particular root table. Let me do this. Okay. So I'm going to AWS console. This is RT for public. Look at this subnet association. Okay. We don't have any subnet explicit association. We don't have any subnet association, right? So now what I'm going to do over here, I'm going to click on edit subnet association, right? Here I'm going to select two public subnet. So public subnet one and public subnet two. And I'm going to click on save association. Okay. Look at this. Two subnets are already associated. Now, as I associate these two public subnet with RT for public, okay, here with the main root table, only two left, which is actually associated, these two private subnet already associated with the pri uh, with the main root table, right? So this is the current situation right now. I have one root table, main root table, and both of my uh, public subnets associated with the RT for public. I have main root table and both of these private subnets are already associated with this. Your subnets can be associated with one root table only. So suppose if you are going to sub associate these two subnet with RT for public, it will automatically be associated with the main root table. Okay. So you do not need to be associate over there. Right. Now, as a final process, what we will do, we will add roots over here. We will inform RT for public about internet gateway. And at the end, this particular root table having a connectivity with internet gateway, these two subnets are already associated with this. So these two subnets will be public and this will be private. Okay. So let's do this. I'm going to the AWS console. Here I have RT for public. Here I'm going to the roots. Okay. Clicking on add root, edit roots. Now add roots 0.0.0, .0, 0 .0. here internet gateway. And then the final is to click on save changes. And now we are in the same scenario as we have over here. And this is how you can configure public subnet and private subnet. How I can say that these subnets are public because these subnets are associated with the RT for public and RT for public having connectivity with internet gateway. That's why it is public. These two subnets don't have connectivity with internet gateway. So they are private. Now, is it done? No. As we have this private subnet, we are having lots of challenges to manage instances in the private subnet. For example, suppose if I have this EC2 instance in which I have this database server, right? Now, how I can access this? You know, I don't have inbound internet. Even I don't have public IP. Now, I'm sitting over here in my office. I want to establish SSH, right? I have to establish SSH connectivity first. Then I can access this and then I can install my SQL server. But without internet, without public IP, how I can access this EC2 instance in a private subnet? Right? Yes, it is easy to access any EC2 instance in a public subnet because we have inbound internet connectivity. Here, we don't have inbound, we don't have outbound. So how we can access this EC2 instance? You don't need to worry. Yes, you need to wait for one day because I'm going to explain you how we can access this EC2 instance in a private subnet using two ways. Yes, wait for a while. We'll meet again tomorrow. Thank you very much. See you. Goodbye.